In this Anking video, we're going to talk about how to update to Anki 2.1.41 and beyond and all the new features that were included. This was a big update and there's a lot to show you. There are all sorts of really cool things. I'm going to show you in this version. I'm just going to show you I am on 2.1.41 right now. And if we go over to here, this is just the Anki website. You scroll down, that's they're currently actually on 0.42, but there was some minimal changes here. That's where you can download this. I'll put a link in the description actually for here, because you can actually go download all the previous releases of Anki, which is kind of nice. Uh, you know, click on here, you can see all of them, and then you can download the one that you want, and you can also see all the changes, which is nice. And then I'll also link this video that I made. This video shows you how you can use multiple different versions of Anki. I have about five different versions on my computer. Don't necessarily recommend that but uh, you can have one or two so that you can go back and forth if there are add-ons or something that are breaking which unfortunately in this version right now there are quite a few add-ons that are broken but it is in the process of being updated so with that I'm gonna show you six different things I really like that changed in this version of Anki going from my least favorite to my most favorite so we'll start with the least favorite which is changes to the editor now the reason I list this as my least favorite is because this is the editor and basically any add-on that alters this got broken by this update. <laughs> so there are some good changes. This actually is really good moving forward and will make things more stable so that add-ons don't break. But right now they're broken and a lot of them are broken but a lot of them have also been updated. I'm going to put in the description uh, a list of ones that I know that are broken right now uh, just for your information. Now, there is another one thing I will tell you here. A lot of you probably use the frozen fields add-on. You'll notice I have the little frozen fields here. This is actually not the normal frozen fields that you're probably uh, I've been recommending, so it's probably the one you're using. This is Z frozen fields, and this one works on this version of Anki. Uh, there's also an add-on called collapsible fields that also works on this version because both of those were written by our team's Heinrich Geisel, uh, and he's the one that helped make the changes to Anki for this editor. So those two add-ons do work. Switch over to that. Now the cool feature that was added to the editor is if I'm going to type a tag here, I'm just going to type the word keep, you'll see two tags pop up. Now notice that the word keep is not the beginning. It's in the middle of these tags. Previously, this would only find tags that started with keep. So this is actually a really nice update that lets you arbitrarily search for your tags. Um, that's really it that's been updated for the editor. So with that, we're going to move on to number five. My fifth favorite update in this version is the stat screen. And the stat screen has a lot of really cool updates. I'm actually going to click on this here. Um, these really fancy updates were added a few updates ago, but now there's some extra ones that you wouldn't necessarily notice on top if you didn't know they were there. Now here at the top, the future do screen here. This actually is really, really cool for what I'm going to show you is my number one favorite update in this version of Anki. But if you hover over here, you can get information. You can actually click on that and it will pull it up in the browser so that you can see those cards that are due. That is really cool. Uh, now the next thing is here on your calendar, if you want to look and see things, you can actually change which day of the week you're starting on just by clicking on things and it will pop up. It, it's a little finicky for me, but um, anyway, give it a shot. Just kind of a handy thing there. And then another thing that was updated here is you can actually um, remove the suspended cards so you can look at the statistics of cards that are just unsuspended um, versus not. So that's kind of the updates. That's really all we're seeing right now in this current version of Anki. Um, I will show you a little secret. If you liked the old stat screen, if you hold down the shift key and click stats, it will actually pull up the old stat screen. <laughs> just for those of you that are old timers like me, I still use it every now and then. Number four is changes to the browser. Uh, now if I go in here to the browser, uh, you'll see the browser actually does look a little bit different. <laughs> There's quite a bit that's going on here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you, so I'm just going to type in uh, Canada fungus, right? Like I'm just searching for a flashcard on this. If I hit enter, it switches it and puts the and in there. It just like makes it like a, a search so it's a little more sense. Now you could also type in or and and add in other things and you'll get more stuff. So it just kind of helps you to make those searches. Now I actually have a video here on how to find cards and tags in the browser. I also have another video on advanced searching techniques. There's a lot of really cool things you can do within Anki to make your searches more powerful, um, just so you know. 
Now the next thing that was added in the browser, if I go up to the notes screen here, oh sorry, edit screen here, you can create a filtered deck now from the browser. They used to have an add-on to do this. This is now built into Anki. Uh, so you, see, you can see here's my name, but notice that it does what I was searching for previously, and you can change all those settings. I have a video on custom filtered decks. I will link that in the description so that you can watch that. Um, they're some of my favorite things to use. They are really, really powerful. Uh, now the next two things that were added to the browser uh, are a little more technical so they may not apply to all of you but they are cool. Now you can do prop and this is an add-on I have here. Let's see POS for position oops and then we'll do equals two and that's going to bring up any new cards with a position of two. Now you can do this with position of one and, and so on and so forth. You can find that where they're positioned um, if you like to manually move your cards around. So that's just an example. And then there's also this one, I've already searched it here, is reschedge and then four. So that's going to show all cards that I manually rescheduled in the last four days. So if I click on this and I click the info here, you'll see that I manually rescheduled that twice recently. Um, so it's just kind of a handy thing, but like I said, more technical and may not apply to a lot of you. But with the browser there's a really cool thing here and number three is the sidebar which has a lot of really cool changes the changes to the sidebar are huge and i know it may not look like it on the surface and that's because a lot of us have been using add-ons like hierarchical tags or better tags this actually now essentially incorporates all of those and more so you can see i've got a lot of tags here and they're hierarchical i don't have any add-on that's doing this this is just default vanilla Anki but I can take tags that are here and drag and drop them and they will now show up there and you can also do your undo button if you want to reverse that you can also right click on a tag and rename the tag if you get on one that has a hierarchy here you can right click on it and then expand the children you can collapse the children um, and so on and so forth so there's lots of really cool things you can do with the tags another cool thing is you can actually do that with these decks as well not just the tags so we'll move that in and notice it goes underneath that one um, now previously the customized sidebar add-on made it so that all of your note types and stuff were put under one little thing here which cleans things up a bit this now does it with everything in the sidebar which is really really cool um, and one thing that might be confusing at first is you'll say wait where's the whole collection button if you click the decks here then it will show you the whole collection everything that you have uh, same thing with like flags if you wanted everything that's flagged you can click on that um, so lots of really good changes there and then they've added so previously there was a do button I've already done all my flashcards for the day but they would show up um, but they've, they've split that into an overdue so if it's things that were due previously now you can click on that now of course I don't have any because I keep up on my flashcards every day like you should um, but if, if for whatever reason you need that they are in there uh, and you can make a filtered deck from that or whatever and then save searches if you need to save this search notice there's no filter bar up here um, all the preview button was moved down here and the button that was a filter is now gone and that's because it's not really needed everything's on the sidebar now but you can right click on the save searches and save the current search save it as test and it will save under there so that's a lot of really cool features and then one of my favorite ones here is the sidebar filter you can search through the whole thing previously there was an add-on that would help you do it this is now built in so if I search keep notice that it pulls up those two flashcards that I highlighted earlier in this video my second favorite update to this version of Anki is really small but huge and it's to the scheduler this is why it's such a big deal now you'll notice when you log in this is a new profile it will actually prompt you and say hey do you want to update to the v2 scheduler which yes we do we all do because it's amazing and you really do need it now i've made a video here on how to use custom filter decks and the problem with those is that they don't really work on the old scheduler you need the v2 scheduler to use them effectively and I also have a video on the V2 scheduler, and I'm going to link both of these in the description so you can go watch them. But the problem with updating to this was that it would kick all your cards out of learning, which was a huge problem. So if I go into the browser here, and I'm, let's show you, I've got 24 cards in learning, uh, and we're going to go ahead and update, and you'll notice it doesn't affect anything. Um, uh, 
Anki Droid supposedly is going to be updated shortly after I'm, I'm making this video here. So I'm going to click no. I'm going to go ahead and update the scheduler. We'll go back to the browser. Look at my learning cards. You'll notice there's still 24. It didn't reset any of them, which is a huge, huge deal um, for those of you that have like 500 cards in learning at all times. So that's, a, that's really nice. Uh, and it makes a big difference to use the V2 scheduler. Go watch this video and then go watch how to use custom filtered decks. I promise they seem a little more complex, but everyone that I have taught how to use this is using them religiously now and swears by it. I love them and it makes a big difference. My number one favorite update in this version of Anki is the changes to the rescheduler. We've essentially incorporated the rememorize add-on into Anki and it's incredible. And one of my favorite parts about this is that means on Anki mobile, you can also do it. And I'll show you some of my favorite parts about that. So here's this video on how to miss a day. This is my favorite video, my favorite Anki skill I've ever made a video out of. I love it. I think everyone should learn how to use it because it makes Anki bearable, especially if you're a medical student or something and you're doing, you know, five, six hundred flashcards a day. Sometimes you just need some sanity, right? So I'm going to go into the browser and show you the rescheduler first. Now, this is the Fastbar add-on, which I have updated with the new set due date instead of reschedule. Um, and if we go up here to the cards button, there's now a forget button. So if we have a flashcard here and you want to set it to brand new, you would forget it. It will make it brand new. And then you can do the um, reposition for new cards to change what number it's at. Or you can set the due date. And that's going to bring up this screen here. Now it's kind of confusing, but essentially what you can do is you can alter the interval, you can alter the due date, or you can alter both of them. So let's go in here really quick. I'm going to pull this up and we've got interval, we've got due date. Okay. We'll scroll over. I'm going to move this. Oops. Let's move you over here so that we can see those together. There we go. So now we've got new cards and we've got, and you can see both of these. So I'm going to unsuspend this and let's click set due date and let's set it for 21 days from now. Now you'll notice it is now due in 21 days and we just altered the interval and the due date. Now if I want to set the due date and change it so that the it's now due today, but the interval stays 21 days, I would click or type zero. So we'll do that and notice that now it is today, March 12th, which is what it is on my computer, but the interval remained 21 days. Now let's go back. I'm going to reset it to 21 days like it was. And if I set due date, but this time I'm going to set it to three days, but I'm going to put an exclamation point there. That means we're going to reset the interval and the due date. So I'm going to do that. And now you'll see it's due in three days and it has an interval of three days. Now this is huge. It makes a really, really big difference. The other thing, uh, just a real quick note, whatever you type in here, it's going to remember. So if I type in three, two, seven, and then we'll do the exclamation point and I do that. Um, and I go back in, it's going to stay there, which is really nice. Um, one convenient thing also to mention real quick before I show you my favorite little skill here is if I click on a deck, we go into the reviewer and then I have a shortcut for it. I'm going to hit R. Notice that pulls right up. Now the default shortcut is control shift D. Um, I've changed it with the customized keyboard shortcuts add on to R uh, just for convenience. But notice this exact same screen does the exact same thing, but from the reviewer, which I think is really handy. How I like to use this is I do seven days. So I'm kind of burying the card for seven days. Um, previously in the rememorize add on, you would have had to do negative seven. Um, now it's just a normal seven. Whereas if you want to actually alter the due date and the interval, you would put the exclamation point. So just like that. Now, how do I use this? And I mentioned this when we were doing the statistics thing earlier and I was showing you. So I'm going to go to the whole collection here. Now notice today I have an exceptional amount of cards, but I don't the rest of them. Now let's say that the next few days, I'm not busy at all really. But today I'm extremely busy, so I would prefer to do less flashcards today, and I'd rather do them later. What you can do is I'm going to click on this, and it's going to pull up all the flashcards that are due today. Now you could do this for any day. And what I usually like to do, so here's prop due equals zero. I like to add in prop interval greater than 21. And that's going to make it so it's just flashcards that are mature. Um, now you see if you look at this interval, you'll notice that most of them are out like six months, right? 
So my thought process in doing this is that it doesn't matter if I do a flashcard today, which is maybe exactly six months from when I did it last time, versus tomorrow or the next day, which would be six months plus one day or plus two days. It really doesn't matter. So for these more mature cards, you can kind of move them around. And I've got 72. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of those and I'm going to go to set due date. Now I don't want to change the intervals. I want to leave them normal, but I do want to move them over the next few days. So I'm going to do one, two, five, and I'm just going to spread these 72 cards over the next five days. I'll click OK and then I'm going to hit exit. Let's go back to the stats screen and oh, I need to exit out of it and refresh it. Now we go back into the stats screen and you can see I've significantly reduced my burden today and we've added a little bit of flashcards but fairly evenly because we randomized them over those few days. So that's what I love about this huge update in 2.1.41. Thanks for learning with the Onking. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at OnkingMed. Also, feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, ongingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.